Okay, so I don't I don't really know how well this is even recording. I'm trying to record this by myself, which is a bad idea in retrospect. But I wanted to make a quick video and explain to people really briefly, and then later on turn it into a bigger video, why modern Bible versions are different than the King James, as well as explaining why the CBGM, the new method that modern textual criticism is going to use, I want to explain why the CBGM destroys everything that modern textual critics have been saying. Uh, years back when I studied this issue, I realized, you know, there's, there's a big problem with what the Bible scholars are saying and with the facts. And it seemed to me like things were inconsistent, didn't make no sense, and I didn't understand, you know, why are they changing Bibles based on the data that we have? And so I just want to explain this really briefly and then explain why this destroys the modern textual criticism that led to Bibles being changed. Because the King James Version is based off of what we know as the Byzantine text, or you can just simply call it the received text. Because 5,500 plus manuscripts make up the Byzantine text. Now, there's only a few manuscripts, relatively speaking. You know, a handful uh, to, let's just say 20, you know, to 50 at most, you know. Just fragments in you know comparison to this. And even then... A lot of it's papyri. Often, you know, I don't want to rip anything up here. I have a tissue here. Imagine a papyri may be something like that. A tattered piece of paper with like three letters on it. Um, and so a papyri is not really a manuscript. But what, you know, scholars really think is, is just, you know, the greatest thing ever is these two codexes from about three 400 uh, A.D., Alexandrius, uh, or they call it Vaticanus and Sin uh, Sinaiticus. There's also Alexandrius. But they basically call them Aleph and B. And so I'll just put A and B here. So Aleph and B are these two codexes, or codices, however you want to say it, that really go into what they used to call the Alexandrian text type. Okay? The Alexandrian text type is uh, supposedly, according to modern textual critics, the opposite of the Byzantine text type. Both of these, you say, well, why are they called Alexandria and why are they called Byzantine? Byzantine would be called Byzantine based off of the area that they're found in. Alexandrian would be based off of Alexandria, Egypt. And so they would say this. This, was, this used to be the textual theory was, you know, based on what part of, you know, the planet you're finding these manuscripts, you have a text family. And so, you know, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, they would be... Alexandrian text type, whereas, you know, this vast majority of manuscripts, they are the Byzantine text type. You say, well, what does this matter? Well, what happened was, with West Cotton Hort and with a lot of unbelieving, you know, textual critics of the early 20th century and late 19th century, what happened was they had to figure out a way, you know, how can 5,500 plus manuscripts that essentially read the same, essentially, there's not obscure, crazy omissions or additions or changes. You know, they essentially read the same. How can the vast majority of these manuscripts possibly be wrong? You know, this is what, you know, and you look at the timeline. I, I've, you know, wonderful timeline I wrote here. But if you went from 50 AD to 2019, you know, the vast majority of history, save the first couple hundred, you know, three, four hundred years, uh, we could even say four or five hundred years and just grant on that, you know, this very first part has these weird different texts, but everything else we have is this. And so they say, you know, how can the majority of manuscripts read like the King James does, and the minority of manuscripts, which we typically find, you know, dating back to an earlier period, known as the Alexandrian text type, how can they read differently? And they come to the conclusion that these earlier manuscripts, known as, or, you know, previously considered the Alexandrian text type, these earlier manuscripts are superior because they're older. And that idea is born in unbelief. They don't believe that we have God's word here. They only have, think we had close to it here. And so the farther you go back, the closer we get, and that inevitably leads to apostasy, which means we don't really have the original. Um, and throughout history, the whole church of Jesus Christ was totally confused as to what the true Bible was. But I don't want to get into all that. I want to get to this simple point and then end the video because I'm and I'm trying to talk fast because Bible studies here soon. Here's my point. 
so t textual criticism, modern textual critics, based everything that they believed and taught and how they changed the Bibles based off of the idea that these select few manuscripts, you know, most of these, et cetera, here would be papyri, fragmented, very garbage, bad manuscripts, hardly, you know, readable or even discerning. Can't even discern what's written on some of them. You know, some of them, they presume, not even know Greek. Uh, but, you know, so you know, really you're looking at these couple manuscripts that really represent the Alexandrian te text type, the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus uh, codices, from about 400 A.D. And they would say, well, yeah, there's not many of those, but it's that family. You know, there's only a few of these manuscripts, but it represents a family, and that family, you know, died off due to the Islamic invasions and persecution and, you know, just the area or whatever, it just died off. But that's that text type. And, oh, yeah, you have 5,500-plus manuscripts that all agree with each other. Well, that's just because it's that text type. It's that family. And so what they do is they just write off this gigantic body of evidence as a text type. Oh, you know, we should move away from the Byzantine text type and move toward the Alexandrian text type because it's closer to the original. That was their whole idea. The entire argument, the whole, the whole way they got away from the Byzantine text type, they moved away from the King James, was on the idea that the earlier text type was closer to the original. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Talking so fast, I, you know, I'm losing my train of thought. Here's where it gets interesting. There's a new methodology they came out with called the Co Coherence-Based Genealogical Method, the CBGM, so to speak. The CBGM is essentially a computer program by a bunch of dudes, and it's, it's going to determine the coherence or the level of agreement of all these manuscripts that we have. Well, what the CBGM determined was there's only one text type. There's only one. And really, that was determined even before the CBGM, if we were to be honest. Before the CBGM, there, there was, you know, only, only the BYZ symbol in the textual apparatus. There was no Alexandrian symbol in the textual apparatus. If you had an NA28, NA27, it did not say Alexandria. It said BYZ because there was not a consistent family. And so there is no such thing as an Alexandrian textile. Well, if there's no such thing as an Alexandrian text type, or Western, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, if there's no other text type except for the Byzantine text type, if, if there's only one textual family, then why did we ever move away from what the vast majority of that family said? You see, and they attack this, say you're not just merely counting noses. But what I'm pointing out is the whole, you know, reason they gave us for moving away from the Byzantine text, the traditional text, that underlies the King James, was that these earlier manuscripts, they read radically different. Yeah, that's because they're a different text family. Well, hold on a second. Those text families don't exist. And so now we're at a position where modern textual critics began back here, you know, the 20th century, uh, you know, early uh, 20th century, later 20th century. They began saying, well, you know what? This Alexandrian text type is more accurate. We need to go back to it. It's represented in Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Now, in 2019, they're saying, well, you know what? Turns out, there, there is no such thing as Alexandrian. Instead, all we have is Byzantine. And if all we have is Byzantine, then these join that. And then you're left wondering, why do 5,500 plus manuscripts read one way, and these couple other ones read a different way. And then you're going to say, well, surely the majority in most cases would be right, unless there's some you know, other circumstances that would lead us to believe, like, for example, 1 John 5, 7, or John chapter 8 with the woman caught in adultery. Perhaps, you know, John chapter 8 was mangled, as was testified in about 400 A.D. by Augustine, uh, or maybe it was Jerome, I think it was Augustine, uh, who said that people were taking John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery, as a reason to, uh, uh, you know, commit adultery. Oh, I'll commit adultery, Jesus, forgive me. And so they, they omitted it in some, and he tried to get rid of it. Or perhaps First John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. 
perhaps people who hated the doctrine of the deity of Christ and the Trinity wanted to remove that. You know, in those, you know, small, you know, circumstances, those very few circumstances where we have outliers, maybe we need to do a little bit more thinking and, you know, say, well, what did the church accept as, as the Bible throughout history? Surely the indwelling of the Holy Spirit led men of God to know the true reading of Scripture all throughout history. But in the vast majority of cases, this all agrees. And these wind up being these weird outliers. And by the way, they don't even agree with each other. There are, fa- there are more di- di- disagreement in the Gospels alone than could be counted by a naked eye. I mean, thousands and thousands was the, uh, was the number given by people who have actually studied and compared Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Thousands of differences in the Gospels alone. And so these books don't agree. They don't agree enough to form a family. They pretended they did so that they can move you off the Byzantine text type until, you know, later on that was disproven. And now we're now here here we are, where there's only the Byzantine text type. That's all we have, but they still want you to use these. So now, yeah, all we have is the Byzantine, but get rid of these. And the only thing that matters is Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. And if they were to be honest, the more I've studied it, all that matters is Vaticanus. Um, if we were to be honest, the only thing that really matters to them is that one codices. And isn't it weird that it's from the Vatican? And so, you know, someone asked the question, you know, how does the CBGM destroy modern textual criticism? Simple answer, it destroys modern textual criticism because, well, I don't know, everything that modern textual critics have been teaching for the last 50 to 100 years has been predicated on the belief and idea that there's such a thing as text families, which we now know is not true. And if the only reason we ever moved away from the received text is based off the idea that there's such a thing as text families, we should have never moved off of the traditional text. And you need to get a King James. So uh, hopefully this video is edifying. I'm going to walk around here and cut this thing off.